Hey everyone, uh, just finished watching the Blackmagic NAB 2025 update where they've made several announcements. Uh, the, the, the most significant being the Pixis 12K, which is essentially the Ursa Cine LF's new sensor, that 12K sensor now put into the Pixis body. That is the big announcement from today. Also another underrated announcement is the Cinema 6K getting a better update to have now autofocus, to now have autofocus on, I think, L mount only lenses, but I'm gonna, I don't wanna confirm that. It's just, we've just finished watching the news conference. I know personally, ever since I used the first Blackmagic Ursa 12K about four years ago, three years ago uh, on a job, I've always loved that sensor, the readout speed, the detail, and not even about filming in 12K, because I never did that, about filming in 8K, filming in 8K and 4K, and it not cropping into the sensor. And that's because it uses Blackmagic's special RGB WW sensor technology. And look, there's tons of people that explain the science of this much better than me. You can look at Team Two Films, uh, my friend Carl Yates and Pro AV TV. He goes into great detail about how this sensor, the RGB WW sensor works. And again, the 12K, you never have to shoot in 12K with this camera. You could keep it in, in 4K or 8K and almost never use the 4, 12K mode and you're still getting a lot of detail. If this camera performs anything like how I've seen the tests on the Ursa Cine with great dynamic range, I think only better by the uh, Mini LF and Alexa 35 in some tests according to CVP. In the highlights, I think obviously the underexposure is still a little bit below like say the Red Raptor, but if it's anything like those cameras, then that's incredible. I finally had a chance to use a Pixis last week on a job, uh, thanks to my friends from Pro AV. I'm gonna make a little bit of a more of a breakdown video about the how I worked with it. But I just loved the form factor. I loved how it felt in the hands. You know, that box form factor and that size is kind of perfect for, for what I've been looking for for years. The Komodo is great, but it's almost too small at times where the Pixis just feels the right size and weight sensor. It's got its limitations, but if you know how to use it, it's a, it's a really good sensor, really strong sensor with a great look if you get the exposure right. But the, a lot of the complaints online about the Pixis was, oh, well, it's using that old sensor. People say it's from like 20, 2018 Sony camera and it's an old Sony sensor. Well, those complaints are gone now. Within that camera, you now have Blackmagic's best sensor, the Ursa Cine sensor. And I just can't really believe that they've done it I've, I've got to say, you can't really complain about it. And the thing that Grant Petty said today was that the autofocus that's going to be now on beta on the Cinema 6K is eventually going to come to all their, all their large format cameras. So eventually you have to think this camera will have autofocus. It may be only available on L and EF lenses, but I imagine it will eventually have autofocus. So you've got a sensor with great readout speeds the sensor's readout speed is only bettered by a Venice and obviously the, and the red global shutter sensors. Not many cameras can perform better than that Ursa Cine sensor when it comes to pure readout speed. And again, the dynamic range is great. Now I'm gonna just read off some, some specs of some of the frame rate options you could do. So from 12 get, 12K, 3.2 open gate up to 40 frames per second, and that's three by two open gate. That's the full sensor. 12K, 69 up to 45 frames a second. 12K 17.9 up to 50 frames a second. And I'm gonna skip down because people are interested in the 8K mode. You do have this 9K Super 35 mode, which I'm curious to know more about because for a lot of people, 9K might seem a lot just to, to be the only mode that you can go in Super 35. It would've been nice if there was a 6K mode, but I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. This camera is incredible when you think about it, what it could do. I'm not complaining. Um, but here, and this is where I think it gets really good. In 8K slash 4K 3x2 open gate, it goes up to 72 frames per second. That's 3x2 open gate, 4K full frame. Um, and if you go down to 69, 8K slash 4K, you get up to 84 frames a second. That's really good speeds. You're essentially getting 4K or 8K full 69 full frame up to 84 frames a second. Now I 
I don't know many 8K cameras that are going to outperform that, that are under $10,000 or 10,000 pounds, I should say, here in the UK. Now, the other thing that I thought was really interesting was the price point. Now, the currently the Pixis here in the UK goes for about twenty seven hundred pounds or twenty nine hundred dollars in the US, uh, depending on tariffs. <laughs> so, it's going for on the website here. I'm saying forty nine ninety five. Um, it says four thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars. I imagine in pounds, probably like forty seven hundred pounds. That is for that for this camera. I think it's great. It, I. I heard some talks about, oh, it's going to have maybe ND. I never thought it was going to have ND. If you actually look at the body and you compare it to something like the FX6 in height, the FX6 is taller and it's taller because it needs to have that END that comes up from the bottom. But I think with things like the Mofage filter, with the Breakthrough L to PL filter, um, and I've got to think if this camera's popular, you're going to see more you're going to see more manufacturers start to come out with their own behind the lens ND filters. You think of Metabones have just come out with an E to EF, one that has an END filter. I imagine with this camera, if it, if it, if it takes up like, you know, it probably will, you're gonna see more of those adapter, I'm sure. And of course you have a front of the lens ND, like people have been using for the last 70 years in cinemas. ND would have been cool, but I don't think that's a big issue. None of the RED cameras except the XL have ND, and I don't see many complaints about that. I think, for me, this represents what Blackmagic have been doing for years, and has been making products for filmmakers for as low as possible. They're giving a lot of camera here for less than $5,000. A lot of camera, you know, again, we don't have to guess what this will look like because we have the Ursa Cine footage, we have the Ursa Cine being tested and reviewed online and starting to be out in the field. We know what that looks like. This is the same sensor. So it should look similar or the same. They're essentially giving us the Ursa Cine image in a box this size that weighs you know, a couple of pounds, you know, uh, you know, three, four pounds. I, I, I think that's incredible. And I think Blackmagic are suing for the fences for this one. You can compare it to a Komodo X, but this is a full frame sensor and it's still a thousand dollars cheaper. You, or in the flip side, you know, FX6, I think is a different user base because again, you know, I'm not going to call it a downside because Blackmagic have committed to using the Blackmagic raw codec. I would have loved to seen some sort of 422 codec, even if it was H.265 in this camera. I think ProRes is long gone with Blackmagic now, but it would have been lovely to see like maybe a 422 H.265, like you have the options to use and to export out in DaVinci. But I think other than that, you can't really argue. And if you're not, if you're a bit concerned about file sizes, you can do 4K. You can keep this camera in 4K and 4K 12 to 1 RAW is not that file and size intensive. This is opening up so many options for filmmakers. Again, we've had, there's tons of options out there. This isn't gonna change the world. It's just a camera. You're, it's about your ideas. But I think we're starting to get to a point, I don't wanna say future-proof, but 12K, which I would never shoot at anyway, for this price and this size, I think, I think it's really exciting. It's really exciting what Blackmagic have done. You gotta give kudos to them and Grant Petty making us wait two hours, <laughs> making us wait two hours in this press conference uh, into his stream. But obviously there's other, Blackmagic aren't just about cinema cameras. They've got other amazing broadcast equipment they gotta advertise, but I think it's great. So anyways, hope that's a quick update. I'm not here to say which camera's better than the whatever, but you know, kudos to the guys at Blackmagic. I have some friends that work there as well. You know, they, I'm sure they've been working hard in the marketing side of things, trying to get everything sorted. But anyhow, this has been a quick news update. It's been, you know, I hope you enjoyed it. You know, really excited to see what's next. But until then, everybody, remember, stay shooting.